meeting to order. It's a, about a minute after seven. Um, it looks like I have a quorum. I have Mike, Bob, and Bob D. Oh, and Kim Miller just signed on as well. Okay, so I definitely have all five selectmen. Um, a first order of our business tonight is to uh, reopen the public hearing um, that was held last week on the Charter Revision Commission's um, report to the Board of Selectmen. Is there any member of the public um, on the call who would like to comment if you are on, on um, Zoom, please raise your hand if you're on the phone. Um, Josh, what's the, the phone key? Is it star seven or star nine? It is star nine. Thank you. I am not hearing or seeing anyone. You may also put something in the chat box um, if you're having difficulty raising your hand and let us know. We have two people on the phone. Um, last four numbers are 7766. Would you identify yourself, please? Hi, I'm Milton Hathaway. Milton Hathaway, can you hear me? Milton Hathaway? Yeah. Milton Hathaway, thank you. <laughs> yes, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, we also have 8850. Bruce Dixon, 72 Tinker Pine Road. Thank you. And uh, 7351. Emily Bradley, uh, 22 ah, Norma's Way. Thank you, Emily. You'd think I'd know those numbers by now, but thank you for um, identifying yourself. Nobody knows phone numbers anymore. You just push a button on your phone with a contact. Exactly. That is that is unfortunately the truth. And I don't even and, push a button. I just talk to it. So. Wow. And I'm getting so that I don't even look to see who's calling anymore because everybody has their own ringtone that I want to talk to. Yep. Um, so um, I am not hearing any further comments. This is the... Uh, second and last chance to raise your hand or speak up if you do have comments. Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing on the Charter Revision uh, Commission report um, and uh, call the uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting to order. I'd like to thank the members of the Charter Revision Commission for joining us. And I understand you have your own meeting tonight as well. So if you need to know. Thursday night, Thursday. Thursday, you have that, your meeting. Ah, thank you. Well, you're welcome to hang around. We canceled, um, we canceled the meeting on Thursday though because of because your meeting on Thursday. Oh. Yeah. Well, so thank you for you, Yeah, Sandy, are you gonna be addressing any of the charter issues tonight? Um, we have a fairly long agenda tonight, and the Charter Revision Commission items are 8F. Um, I also have a nine o'clock curfew, right. so it is very possible that if we get to anything tonight, it will be very limited, and I plan to limit the discussion to changes to the Board of Selectmen only. So we would not be a point, would not be discussing, um, I did a chart, um, we still have Board of Finance and elected versus appointed to discuss after um, the Board of Selectmen, but those definitely will not be tonight. So would you like any of the members of the Charter Revision Commission to wait and for that discussion to come up on the agenda? You are certainly welcome to wait. Um, if you want to designate a rep, we can text someone. Um, 
if you have other items in your life that you find more exciting than listening to five people drone on for two hours. I, I would be willing to receive that text. I, that would be great. And then I'll just okay. come back on the meeting at that time. Gwen, I'll text you. Okay, wonderful. That would be awesome. Thank you, Josh. Okay, good. Thank All right. you. Is there much. anybody else from the charter revision that would like that text? No, I wouldn't miss this for the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John. Uh, this is Jim Aldrich. I, I, uh, term, I'd appreciate a text. Can you I'm not sure if you have your cell uh, or my cell number, but I'll put it in the chat and then you can message me and I'll message you back. Thank you. No problem. Okay, thank you. I'll see you later then. All right, thank you for coming. Yep, bye-bye. All right. Um, Harry, oh, you are with Chelsea Groton. Thank you for identifying yourself. Um, is there anyone on the call who wishes to make a public comment on something not on the agenda? I do, please, for about yes, the Sam. Bolton 300 plus one. Uh, just a quick uh, update because spring is coming uh, upon us and we have uh, the proposed fireworks that were supposed to be June 26th with the Hebron Lions Club. They have ordered the fireworks and it is on uh, they have a, a cancellation time of one month prior, and we are looking to see what the governor will allow. So it's on, on, but on could possibly be uh, put on hold again. The second part of the uh, topic I'd like to bring up for the Bolton 300 plus one is the possibility of a parade in October the first Saturday in October. And um, the discussion has been to consider a smaller type of parade, what would be a, a local parade versus having one that would be incorporating a lot of surrounding towns and others. Um, so looking at local participants, uh, but that is still in discussion and again, it's, uh, very contingent on what's happening and what will come out of Hartford uh, as far as rulings on where we'll be at that point. So I'm sorry, I can't give you anything definitive, but we're looking at uh, um, two possibles. And we'd like to thank Josh Kelly for uh, setting up the trivia, the second trivia night, that's fabulous. And for John Toomey for the uh, TV interviews that he's done, um, that the best we've been able to do for the, the um, Bolton 300 plus one. Uh, and if anybody has any other ideas, please just give a shout and, and we will keep you in the loop. Thank you to Bob Moore and thank you to Bruce Dixon for all their efforts. And thank you, Pam, for uh, your continuing efforts for 300 plus one. Some of us have been uh, a little distracted <laughs> and um, unable to focus on things like that. So I'm very grateful that you're there in the background working hard. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Pam. Um, we are trying to hopefully revive all the things that the Historical Society had planned to do in conjunction with a lot of the other um, Bolton nonprofits. We're going to try to maybe try them for the fall in time for the, you know, so that we at least hit the end of our 300s year. Thank you, John. Welcome. Josh. Okay. Can you, can you please? I don't know why my granddaughter has a picture on here. Can you get rid of snap there already? I think you're all set now. No Thank problem. You. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't know how you got there. <laughs> magic of technology, Bob. It happens to the best of us and the worst of us all at the same time. Worst. Um, Proud grandpa got her there. 
<laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. The first item on the agenda uh, after public comment is the approval of the minutes of um, March 2nd, 2021. Move to be accepted. Thank you, Mike. It's been moved that they're accepted. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any additions or corrections? Long read, but I didn't see any. No. <laughs> I didn't see anything either. Bob, Kim, did you guys see anything? I did, nope. but I can't remember. <laughs> All right. Well, if, if it comes to that, we can do it. Um, we can make that correction at our next meeting. So um, I'm going to ask for approval as presented. Uh, the motion was made by Mike Aramita, seconded by Bob Mora. All those in favor? Aye. 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 There are five hands raised. That is unanimous. Um, moving on to the public hearing minutes of March 23rd. I'll move to be accepted again. Yeah. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded that they um, be approved. Um, I do have one, actually two corrections. Um, Calvin Trumbull lives on Volpi, V-O-L-P-I Road. And Cheryl Uden lives on Keeney, K-E-E-N-E-Y yeah. Drive. And can you move on to the next page, Josh? And I think that was it. Any other additions or corrections? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes as corrected, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? That was unanimous, thank you. Moving on to the March 31st special meeting. This was our discussion of the uh, Charter Revision Commission. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move it. It's been moved by Mark Aramita, second. I'll second it. Thank you, Bob Mora. Um, any additions or corrections? These did agree with my notes on those areas that needed to um, be discussed further. So um, all those in favor of accepting the minutes of March 31st special meeting, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous again. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> moving on. Um, since we have a guest with us tonight, um, for item uh, 8A and B. I'd like uh, the consensus of the Board of Selectmen to uh, move that item up on the agenda. Are there any objections? No. All right. Josh, would you um, like to start this discussion on acceptance of the banking proposal? Sure thing. So as all of you know, for the last, I would say over at least over a year now, uh, we have been going through the motions of developing a banking uh, services request for proposals. That request for proposals went out, I believe, towards the beginning of January and ended uh, mid to late February. Um, we did uh, successfully solicit three different proposals. Uh, and after some uh, deliberation and some very careful consideration, uh, between Sandy, myself, and Jill Collins, the finance director, 
Uh, it's our determination that Chelsea Groton Bank's proposal uh, is the proposal that is going to work best for the town of Bolton. And we evaluated all of these proposals on a very holistic basis. Um, certainly all of the proposals came in and are very low cost the way that uh, the banking proposals generally operate um, nowadays is that as long as there's a certain amount of money in any given bank account, um, that most fees are covered um, to a certain extent. Um, so there is no significant cost to the town for any of the proposals that we saw, but we saw a detail. Uh, we saw a lot of thought, effort, energy, uh, and efficiency that was put into the proposal forward by Chelsea Broaden Bank. And we do have two representatives here from the bank uh, to speak with us tonight should any member of the board have questions and, and certainly I think it would be in order for us to invite them to just say a few words. Um, but it is our unanimous recommendation being myself, Sandy and Jill, uh, that we uh, first put forward a motion tonight by the board, uh, allowing Sandy and Jill uh, to and, and likely Jim as the uh, incoming interim administrator. Uh, to pursue a written and signed agreement with Chelsea Groton Bank, and second, to adopt a new banking resolution that authorizes us to deposit money within Chelsea Groton Bank. Josh, would it be appropriate for us to hear from them prior to making that motion? I think sure. it were. I, I um, also Sorry, wanted I meant... to add that we have consulted um, as part of the um, evaluation with all of the departments in town who handle cash to see if they had any concerns, recommendations, or questions. And uh, the tax collector, the town clerk, um, the library were all consulted and um, I believe got their questions answered satisfactorily. So. Harry, um, I don't know if you or Alexis wants to speak on behalf of the bank. Sure. Thank you so much, everyone. We really appreciate the opportunity to start a relationship with the town of Bolton. Uh, we have quite a few municipalities that we service currently, and we have a dedicated staff that establishes relationships with um, our customers. So when you have a problem or a question, you get a a department that's dedicated for municipalities and business banking customers. Uh, we, we look so forward to working with you, um, not only on the business side, but also as a resource uh, for your employees as well. Uh, we have a state-of-the-art um, sort of a educational financial literacy department that helps educate the community with um, financial courses as well. And, um, you know, it's been working very well in the school systems as well as other areas of the community. So part of being a community bank is uh, giving back to the community. So not only on, on the business banking side of things, but on the community aspect of educating the community with financial literacy classes and also donating back to the community. So we look forward to working with you all and look forward to any questions anyone has with regards to our proposal. And we're thrilled to be here tonight. Thank you all. Thank you. Sure. Wow. Thanks, Perry. We have a for finance, someone who's very concerned about how we accrue and the interest on the deposit. How does that work? Harry, um, just to clarify Bob's question for you, um, we have a member of our Board of Finance who is, um, I guess, extremely concerned about um, our ability to earn interest and the best interest rate possible on our cash. So could you comment on that briefly, please? Thank you, Sandy. Sure. Uh, you know, right now, um, deposit rate environment is very, very low, as we all know. When you're borrowing money right now, it's a great time because interest is very, very low. But for those looking for interest income right now, because of the environment we're in, it's very difficult. Um, and it's tight 
very tight um, on the banks right now. When it's a low interest environment, uh, the banks have a tough time. They really do. I know it's hard to believe, but when you're borrowing money, it's a great time. When you're looking for interest income right now, a little bit more difficult. But, you know, as, you know, uh, we move forward into this year, I think you might see a little shift in that interest rate environment uh, because of the fiscal and monetary policies that we are about to see the results of. Harry, do you have a prediction on rates <laughs> that we won't hold you to? I would, I would absolutely love to give my personal thoughts, um, but no one has the crystal ball. And it seems to uh, be very unique uh, right now with a stock market really uh, at an all time high uh, with what's going on. So it's really hard to predict, um, but uh, I wish I could give you an answer. I really, really do. Uh, but I think, you know, things will change most likely. Uh, I think, you know, pers no, I don't want to say personally, but I, th I think you've already seen a little shift in a loan interest rates starting to creep up a little bit. So that might be a slight indication as to what's coming down the road. But again, you know, I wish I had the crystal ball. And Thank you. this is Alexis. I'll Hi, just, Alexis. Uh, Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for including us on uh, and giving us the opportunity to discuss our proposal. I just wanted to add um, to what Harry mentioned um, about the rates in that um, the the bank does review the rates on a very frequent basis. And so as we would expect to see rates um, in the overall uh, banking community rise, um, we revisit them. It would not be a stagnant rate that you're locked in for, for example, that's um, included in the proposal. This is revisited as um, the interest rate environment um, increases. And so that would be reflected in the rate that you would receive on the money market account that we had proposed as part of the response to the RFP. And the nice thing also just about, you know, um, kind of Chelsea Groton more generally is that, um, you know, we are headquartered in Groton, we're a local bank. So therefore, our senior management is all local, um, both from a responsiveness um, perspective, you know, any questions or um, things that arise, we have, we are able to kind of escalate directly to our senior management locally. Um, and that goes for rate reviews as well. Um, you know, they're all, uh, it's a small team that reviews that. So that could always be revisited. Mike, you're Amita. You're muted, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> and you're far more talented than I in unmuting. <laughs> I, I'm at my son's house, so I'm having a uh, time of it too. <laughs> You're muted again. again How am I getting muted? Uh, is it okay. off now? You are. You're you good. are live. Okay. Uh, I, my question is dealing with over the years, over the past fifteen or twenty years, I've always tried to have my own personal banking with a hometown bank: uh, East Hartford Federal, Manchester Savings, Rockville Bank, and you know every one of those has turned into a conglomerate been bought up and uh, no longer gives the same service that I got or I was promised when I signed up. And you're a, a hometown bank that is probably right for the picking. And I'm just wondering what your long-term uh, projection is as far as that, as far as you no longer being a hometown bank with hometown people that we can talk to and instead being a conglomerate of uh, you know nationwide type thing. Totally, totally understand. Mike, thank you. That's an awesome question. Um, I've been at Chelsea Groton for 27 years. I started as a collector, went into residential lending, uh, and then the president and the head of retail came up to me and said, uh, we want to start a business banking department because Chelsea Groton is kind of more of a personal consumer type of bank, and we want to start a business division. And so they thought I'd be really, really good at it. And I said, I don't know anything about business banking. And they said, yeah, we'll teach you business banking. And, uh, but we think you'll be really good at it and, you know, give it a shot. And when the president asks you to do something, you generally do it. So I did it. And I loved it ever since. Every day, I love going to work and doing what we do and helping the community and the business partners that we have. Um, I can tell you this right now, uh, we were founded in 1854 the purpose that Chelsea Groton was established 
uh, was to provide um, consumers a safe place to put their money and to lend to the community residentially to promote home ownership and to expand businesses to improve the overall quality of the community. That model has not changed since 1854. And we've only grown to about 14 branches uh, in you know, our area in New London County primarily. Um, and it hasn't changed. And I know exactly what you mean because a lot of times what we'll do is we'll acquire a relationship or you know, work on a relationship. And it might be a, a different bank, a larger bank that you know, we're working with. And they're like, how do we know you're gonna be here in the future? And it's like, and I tell them the story of Chelsea Groton and what we do in the community. We are invested in the community and the board of directors, our president and CEO has no intention of merging or being bought out by anyone. We're a community bank, we're not a stock held bank. So no one can come in and buy us out like some of the recent acquisitions that you've seen in the paper or in the news. I, I yeah, and just think, to go sorry, ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to add on to what Harry mentioned. Um, you know, as a mutual bank, our charter is such that we cannot be bought or sold without uh, modifications made to our charter, which would require um, sign off from our members. And so it's basically very, very unlikely scenario. Um, we're not ripe for the picking like a lot of the other um, local banks that have different charters. Um, the, our charter is set up so that we cannot be bought or sold. Okay, thank you. Thank you. A follow-up question there. As a depositor, would Bolton be one of those voting uh, shareholders, if you will, should something like that occur? I believe so. I will confirm that um, what the criteria are, but I believe so. And All I can right. I can certainly um, let you know. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Um, I just wanted to remind the Board of Selectmen that the reason we went out to bid was that uh, our current banking relationship um, has deteriorated badly over the last six years um, to the point where there is no responsiveness, there is no effort on behalf of the bank to resolve issues, and the issues um, seem to be happening more frequently and repeatedly. We have so, become too small an account for them. That, that's exactly true. They have grown um, to the point that we are very small potatoes to them, and um, their proposal showed that. Whereas um, I am excited about the possibility of moving to Chelsea Groton. And with that, I'm going to move that we accept the banking proposal from Chelsea Groton Bank. And I'll second that. I, what I know about that bank, it's, it, 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 Mike is the type of bank that you would want. Okay, that's good. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with being able to call and talk to somebody. <laughs> Not only that, but I can guarantee you that they will be calling us to just check in and say, hey, Jill, what's going on? So, because they're that, that kind of a service house. Any further dis discussion on the motion that was made by me and seconded by Bob Moore? Mike? One qu quick, quick question. How long is the arrangement for? Uh, I don't believe we had an end date. Um, we do have fees, I believe for a year, um, but that's um, about as good as a deal as you're gonna get from anybody. And it is not, it's a mutual agreement. It is not uh, something that we could not break. Okay. All right, that's fine, thank you. Before the vote occurs, Sandy, I would also just like to add that I did conduct a full reference check, um, and I don't think I've ever seen um, a higher praise for uh, any sort of business, uh, certainly, but uh, there, was, there was a lot of praise from municipalities and private businesses alike. 
So just add that for comment. All right. Um, seeing no other hands raised, um, all those in favor of accepting the bank proposal from Chelsea Groton Bank, please raise your hand. Aye. I see five Aye. hand Aye. raise. <laughs> that is unanimous. All right. Next item is adoption of a banking resolution with Chelsea Groton Bank. Um, unfortunately, every time you open up a new account, you've got to go through all kinds of resolutions. Um, I'm going to adopt the resolution as presented. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I have to remember that it's you because you kind of sound like Jim Aldrich in <laughs> Mike's <laughs> office. Um, the uh, So it's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments about the banking resolution? No. All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Uh, everybody's hand is up. That is five in favor. Thank you. Um, Harry, we will get this executed. Um, obviously, we're in at least three different locations at the moment, um, but we will get this um, executed and off to you. And I look forward to a uh, long and uh, mutually enjoyable um, relationship with Chelsea Groton. So thank you and Alex for coming, Alexis rather, for coming tonight and answering our questions. Thank you all very much. We look forward to the opportunity of being your bank. And uh, as well, we look forward to a long lasting relationship. Thank you, everyone. Thank you Good so night. much. Thank you. All right, um, let's move back up to appointments. Um, we had um, thought that perhaps we would appoint the um, diversity council today. Um, we have nine people who have um, volunteered. Six of them are Democrats and three are unaffiliated voters. So Mike and Bob, if you could um, sort That's of shake, homework. <laughs> you've got some homework here. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, unaffiliated voters, uh, Republicans would be extremely welcomed. Thank you. Um, and uh, with that, we will move that off until um, our May meeting. Um, we also had three people who had asked for appointment to the Economic Development Commission. Um, however, I think it's wise that we hold off on appointments there. I'm not sure what they can accomplish in six months and with the charter change, they may no longer exist. So um, if anybody disagrees with me, we can have those individuals come to our May meeting and potentially appoint them there. Comments from anybody on the board? Well. If they're interested, I, I would just like to hear what, what they have to say. Uh, qu quite honestly, anyone that's interested in serving on the board is to me is a potential person, whether they, they serve on this board, they, they may well be someone interested in, in, in filling some other vacancies that occur. So I, you know, I think if they're, you know, they want, if they want to serve, I'd like to hear what they have to say. Okay. Maybe maybe we can convince them to be on something else too. <laughs> well, you read my mind. <laughs> yeah, bring your bring your sales talk. There we go. We your elevator speeches. Um, <laughs> Josh, did you circulate those names to all members of the board or just to me? They've only been circulated to you at this point, but I can I can first and foremost circulate those names uh, either now or in a follow up email to this meeting, uh, and I could also work with Jim to line up. Uh, a little bit of elaboration on their applications uh, so that you have more information to work with at your next meeting in May. Excellent. Thank you. 
Um, next is approval of a resolution appointing the Board of Education as Public Building Commission with regard to full roof replacement and other repairs of Bolton Center School. Um, oh, Sandy, did you want to bounce back up to correspondence and reports and updates? Or? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you so much. Jim, you've got no big shoes to fill. Um, <laughs> The, do, do you have correspondence, Josh? I do not. I don't, which I feel a little silly saying, listing that as the next thing to go to, but I <laughs> Well, sometimes I have correspondence that I've gotten directly, so. True. Um, next on the agenda is the announcement of the interim administrator. Um, it's been all over social media today. I believe it's been announced to the staff. A press release went out yesterday but the Board of Selectmen at our meeting last week appointed Jim Rupert as interim um, town administrator. Um, Jim will be serving us at least until uh, January of 2022. Um, we hope that um, this turns out to be another mutually beneficial arrangement and um, we can continue the arrangement on a more formal basis. But at this point, it um, is uh, moving forward interim. And we're excited to have you, Jim. So thank you for accepting the challenge. And uh, we look forward to having you um, on board. Um, this is also uh, sort of bittersweet because this is Josh's last meeting with us um, I, for one, Josh, am going to miss you terribly. Um, you can expect to emails and texts um, for me frequently, at least in the short term. Um, and uh, if you ever head back through Bolton to uh, on your way to water from Winstead to Waterford, um, stop by. We'd love to see you. So, and yeah, we sure had a cake for you, but since we we couldn't share it. <laughs> <laughs> You're out yeah. of luck, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To, it's the thought to, that counts. There I know. you go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, subcommittee reports. I'm not sure we have any. Josh? I, I will say I apologize that the minutes aren't quite done. We did have a uh, human resources subcommittee meeting that right. met, or human resources subcommittee met uh, last Wednesday. So I'll be finishing those minutes up in the morning and getting them posted. Um, but at that meeting, we did discuss a number of different items. It was a precursor to uh, the board's appointment later that night of Jim as interim administrator. There was continued discussion on union negotiations, um, and there was um, very brief and, and fleeting discussion on the continued discussion on the HR policies. Um, but I will send those out since they should have been in your board packet today. I will send those out directly to all of the board members once the minutes are completed. That's the only subcommittee that has met since we last came together as a full board. Okay, any questions for Josh, for someone who wasn't at the HR subcommittee meeting? All right, moving on, uh, properties and facilities report. I, I will say since we last met, there was an unfortunate Accident that took place over at the tennis courts. I feel like tennis courts have been an item for discussion under properties and facilities for a little too long now. Um, but uh, I, I, we are working through uh, and working in partnership with KERMA, uh, which ensures all of our properties to make sure that we are pursuing um, the, uh, well, the insurance company of the individual that had the accident, uh, came into contact with the fencing over at the new tennis courts. Um, and uh, that the repairs, my understanding is, are either underway or have been completed at this point. Not completed, very quarter. close to completion. Okay, good. I have one thing. Oops. Oh yeah, Bob. Another item, um, only because it's up our way, the, uh, the work on the drainage system and on Enrico, they are there with full force and it's, uh, it's quite a unique operation. So uh, just to let, Everybody know that that's that's underway. That that it should be completed by the end of the week. So good. Stopped in. It was it was such a cool operation. It's like a kid in a toy box. I just could not stop. <laughs> All right. Um, 
I don't believe there's anything with open space. So that brings us to the budget report, Josh. Hold on just one second and I will pull up that information for you. Um, first, we have the February tax summary as usual, where uh, you're one month behind what you're looking at um, with expenditures. When you're looking at tax collection at this meeting, we didn't quite have enough time uh, between the end of the last month and today to get the March tax collection sheet for you. Uh, but for the March tax collection sheet, that will be made available for the next Board of Finance meeting. So please feel free to tune into that or find it in the Board of Finance packet. So for February tax collection, um, you'll see this bottom line here. We're 99.82% collected uh, for current year levy, motor vehicle, supplemental motor vehicle, Supplemental motor vehicle. Try saying that ten times fast. <laughs> and and uh, prior years interest and fees. Uh, all of that boiled down and comes together to that ninety nine point eight two percent collected. Uh, and as you can see uh, down towards the bottom of the page here, we do have a bit more of a direct comparison for you uh, in February. Uh, and this is looking at just the current year levy. We were a hundred and a hundred point four three percent collected. And in, at the end of February of 2020, we were 101.65% collected. Um, so we are seeing a little bit of a discrepancy between the two years. I wouldn't consider this discrepancy to be uh, of huge concern uh, or huge impact, but uh, it is measurable. So um, that's my on collections at this time. Are there any questions? No, I'm just gonna say the, the, um, the uh... Additional taxes that were due in January were extended as far as the due date. So I, I'm sure there's more revenue that's simply not reflected in here. That, will that is true. That. that is true. They as were extended moment, till April. Right. Yes. Right. As of this moment, anyone who hasn't paid those bills, uh, they're now overdue, but that's right. reflected here in this collection report. You're absolutely right. right. And we are doing far better than most of our neighboring oh, towns <laughs> as far as a percentage of overall collections. So we're not doing terribly bad at all. No, considering. No, no, it's actually excellent. Actually, very good. Considering what we were worried about last fall and yep. last summer, we're not doing bad at all. Seeing no other questions or comments on that, um, feel free to. We can bounce back to that if needed. But coming in here and looking at the March expenditure report, um, for those of you who jumped in really quickly to the uh, packet as I sent it out yesterday, you might think that these numbers are a little bit different. Uh, it appears that Jill, in sending the report along to me, um, just forgot to add up the totals down at the bottom. So this is now the correct report that you're looking at and what you're seeing. Oh, in your accessing it from the packet that I sent you, um, you will be seeing the correct numbers. Uh, overall, we are 59.34% expended as of the end of March. Um, that's pretty much in line with where we were at this time last year. Uh, so as I said, we're getting towards the end of the year. I, I feel more comfortable and I've been uh, conveying that increased level of comfort to department directors to uh, go ahead and if there are some larger expenditures that were budgeted to now is the appropriate time in the year where we can go ahead and make those. Uh, given the coronavirus, we've been trying to be as conservative as possible, but we do want to make sure that those departments are getting the, the equipment, the goods, the services that they need in order to succeed. So uh, that's why we've, I think, caught up a little bit of uh, this year as compared to last year. Um, and, but overall, the last two years, this year and the prior fiscal year, uh, are both beating expectations compared to the two before that. So um, we are continuing to uh, keep a tight conservative eye on the budget. The one department where we're seeing a very slight uptick uh, from what I would consider to be the benchmark for this point in the year, we're, we're three quarters of the way through. Uh, the fiscal year, meaning that 75% expensed is really the benchmark where we should be. And the one department uh, that doesn't have a lot of fixed annual costs, uh, that's a little overexpended is land use. We've talked about this before. Um, it, it has been trending a little slightly higher this year than it has in past years. Um, but 
those co conversations are being held within the department to make sure uh, that it is coming into a, a more level range. Uh, and I believe in the next two reports that you see, uh, you'll see that uh, level out and come in as expected on budget. Yep. That, and that doesn't reflect the money they bring in from That's right. uh, services to other towns. So why they may be spending three quarters of their budget at three quarters of their budget time, they still bring in money that is not reflected in this that's reflected in income. So they are, uh, they're not doing that bad. That's correct. <clears throat> so all of this is very good news. As usual, we have a very positive outlook for the current budget. Good. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, seeing none, we can... Um, I believe the next item on the agenda transfers. is budget transfers, so I'll pull those up. We do have a number of budget transfers to discuss tonight. If it's all right with all of you, I will go ahead and discuss each of them and share a little information, at least uh, as far as I'm able to. Uh, and after that, I can take questions and, and help facilitate conversation. Sorry, I might need to stop sharing in order to make sure you see this. There we go. So, can everybody see this, this listing? Mm -hmm. yep. You're good. So the first transfer up for consideration today is to the town clerk's office supplies line from the town clerk's professional education training line. Um, these funds are needed to purchase microfilm storage, land record volumes, dot licensing and paper supplies and shipping for these materials. Um, these are materials that are uh, not necessarily always routinely needed, but items that uh, the town clerk is running low on and uh, sees an efficiency to be made, given that very little professional educational training has been able to happen in an in-person manner, in an expensive manner this past year. Uh, and she would like to make use of these funds to get these materials um, uh, that she, she otherwise might not have at her disposal. Um, the second item is the tax collector is $15 to the tax collector dues and fees line from the tax collector professional education training line. And the, the need for this is a recertification fee for the CCMC designation. Uh, it's $20 and it wasn't anticipated in this year's budget. So Lori is asking uh, for a $15 transfer to cover the remainder um, from what's in her budget right now. $8,000 to equipment within the administration line is proposed coming from the professional and technical services line. Um, on behalf of various departments, I have been looking over the past couple of months at what especially computer and tablet equipment is needed in order to make sure that the departments are going to be successful going into the next fiscal year. Um, so I have uh, tried to reach out to a number of different departments. Jay, uh, feel free to, to chime in on this, but I am aware that between the fire marshal's office and the fire commission, uh, there are a number of tablets that they are hoping to uh, access and make use of so that they can uh, make the highest and best use of the new software that they're buying into, that there are, are a number of computers that are needed uh, over in the elections office in order to make sure that they have software that is uh, compatible with the software that's being used by the secretary of the state's office. Uh, and the library, uh, just as an example, is looking for uh, computers that are more robust. Uh, I don't believe that some of those have been replaced. The public access uh, computers have been replaced in uh, well over five to 10 years. In okay. many cases. They're antiques. I'm sorry? They're antiques. antiques. Yes, yes. So uh, I believe that we have, and as you saw in the, the presentation that I made about the budget currently, we are relatively under expense in the administration line. And one of the reasons that I've been trying to be very cautious and considerate of the way that we are able to go forward with spending this money is because I have been hoping uh, to use some extra money for equipment. 
to make sure that we're leaving Jim and the team over at Town Hall in the best possible condition as I step away from the job. Um, so I strongly encourage um, you to consider that transfer. Uh, $8,908 is requested uh, to move the administration from, uh, sorry, other technical services uh, from the professional and technical services line. There is a Fortinet subscription. This is a program that I am not very familiar with just for, for full clarity, uh, but that Alan is very familiar with and has stated we very much need, I believe as a security measure for our tech, uh, software and, and hardware. Um, right now it will expire, it's set to expire on May 23rd. Uh, this transfer would allow us to have a three year contract with them. It would ensure that there is no increase in the cost over the next two fiscal years. Whereas otherwise we would be in a position of having only one, uh, a one year contract where the cost may increase over the next two fiscal years. Um, so uh, while this does put the town in a position where it would be paying for this item once every three years instead of once every year, it will save over the course of those three years, uh, the town money. Uh, so I recommend that. Uh, $755 to the administration dues and fees line from the administration professional educational training. Uh, we weren't anticipating in this fiscal year that we would be uh, trying to get an interim administrator uh, on to have access to ICMA and CTCMA, but I'd like to make that happen immediately if possible. Um, and we have the money to make that happen uh, so long as a transfer is approved. Um, this is an item that comes from the fire commission. Um, so I, I know that there are a couple members on the call. Maybe they want to speak to this a little bit further. Um, but there's a request to have $17,630 moved to the equipment line in the fire commission budget from the administration professional technical services line. Um, and this is for a very specific trailer uh, that will help to alleviate space needs within the firehouse. Uh, that's at least my understanding. Josh, I, I can kick in a little bit more to that if you'd like. Uh, what, what's going to be contained within this trailer will be our UTV with the uh, emergency first aid skid unit and the forestry skid unit as well. Uh, that's what will be contained in it uh, to save space within the fire station. And it will save space. It will probably cut down uh, considerably on the request for additional space uh, for construction of the building, uh, maybe not completely, but for maybe from two bays down to one bay kind of thing. So that's a significant savings. The other part about this trailer is that it's going to be a multifunctional unit. Uh, as I know, but many people don't know, at uh, fire scenes or scenes of emergencies, we establish rehab as a function where the firefighters and EMS personnel go to a section where their uh, rehab, their vitals are checked and everything like that. This uh, trailer will be equipped so that we can have heat and AC in it, which we can plug into our rescue truck so that when we have an incident in either extremely cold weather or extremely hot weather, we can put the people in the trailer, back the UTV out, put the people in the trailer, crank it up and be able to have a good rehab area where they're not sitting out in 90 degree sun trying to rehab from a fire or an emergency incident. So this will be a multifunction unit. It will save us space. It will allow us to carry our UTV and all its equipment. And we will probably have chairs hanging along the walls inside so that when we have an incident, either in our town or another town where uh, rehab is needed, either very cold or very hot weather or other times of the year, we'll be able to uh, have a climate controlled environment for people to go into to rehab. So it will definitely be a multifunction unit and it's a very specific unit that will be built just for this use or just for these specific uses and, and probably others down the line, but it will accomplish these for sure. Hey Mike, what, 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 uh, what pulls it? Uh, either one of our utility vehicles. Okay. Could, you know, you, uh, the, uh, the uh, service 234 is probably the primary unit because that has trailer brakes on it. Yeah. And uh, it will very easily pull it because it, it's, well, it's, it has more than enough weight rating, but the UTV with all its equipment uh, will only push it to about half its weight limit. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it needs to be a little higher than a normal trailer because of the height of the UTV. 
And uh, there's several other things that, that make it a very specific unit when it's constructed, but it will it will serve the fire department for probably 20 years at least. And thank and, you. That was my next question. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't I don't see I, I see this being around for a long time. Uh, you know, and and will serve the functions that that it's designed for. Um, before we get into too much discussion on it, I'd like to just finish the, the reading of the four remaining transfer proposals. Sorry, Josh, I get carried away. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Uh, the next one is $1,000 to senior and social services, uh, other professional services line from their other payroll line. Uh, this is needed funds uh, to help pay for the rollout of the new partnership with UR Community Cares. That is a private nonprofit that is going to be working with us to help deliver. I believe I, I shared this with the board at an earlier meeting. Uh, that is going to help deliver all of the handyman services that we had previously been offering from the town at a discounted rate um, and with a lot less liability to the town. Um, so I'm very excited about this. Uh, they're requesting $1,000 per quarter, and this will help kick it off this fiscal year and Carrie's already built this into her, her budget request for the next fiscal year. $14,782.80 is requested to go to the payroll line at the senior center from the other payroll line. This is merely an accounting matter. Uh, right now, uh, it was, there was a bit of an error in the way that Carrie went ahead and budgeted for this, this current fiscal year. Uh, she was under the impression uh, and, and hadn't really thought through the fact that Stephanie, our program coordinator, was moving from a part-time position to a full-time position. And in order to uh, really make that happen, we need to make sure that her, all of her funds are covered under payroll rather than other payroll. And that is the distinction between the two. Payroll uh, lines cover our full-time staff that have benefits and our other payroll lines cover those who are uh, not full-time and do not collect those benefits. The last two, $800 is requested to go to the fire commission's office operating expenses from their repairs and maintenance line. Uh, and that's needed for desk chairs to be purchased for the fire department. And $328 is requested to go to the equipment line of the town building operations uh, department from the supply line. Uh, and that will allow for the purchasing of two new copiers that have been removed from the capital improvement plan with the knowledge that we have the means this fiscal year to go ahead with the purchase of those copiers. Uh, those are both industrial scale copiers. Um, oh, I apologize. I didn't mean to lower that. But if there's any discussion, um, uh, that concludes my presentation of proposed. Thank you. Whoops, you di everybody disappeared. Um, Bob DePietro, you're muted. There you go. Cindy, I am so very wet behind the ears. I know I'm probably ignorant, but we're lucky to have Mike Aramita explain the trailer. And I'm sure it's all those benefits to the listed us, and we need it. But I'm curious how it came about not being on the, uh, I mean, I don't know what the cap committee is supposed to cover. Why this kind of thing didn't come up before? Can you please help me understand why that comes up now as opposed to before when the budget was being developed for the fire department. Sandy, can you have me or Josh? Yeah, I can hear you. Mike, do you want to answer that? Well, it's, uh, well, it's, it's kind of a multi reason answer. Uh, it's something that we have been talking about for uh, quite some time, uh, who's uh, who's the me members of the fire department trying to figure ways to keep our equipment uh, together and safe and stored and, and along with the potential of a uh, request for an expansion 
Uh, we've been looking at ways that we could consolidate equipment or move equipment to other locations or, or other configurations where uh, we could cut down on that, that request uh, to, you know, like I said, from one bay to maybe, uh, from two bays to maybe one bay, uh, maybe knock uh, a significant amount of money off that request. So we've been toying with a lot of ideas on how we could save space and save money. And uh, this is a need that, that has kind of gone by the wayside each year in, in, in looking for other things that are not more, more important, but are equally as important or more important. Uh, this, this year, you know, I won't say there's a little extra money, but sometimes there's a little bit of money left over in places. And, and this is why the request was made at this time. Uh, you know, uh, along with this request is uh, we will be turning over to the park department or the street department, our current open trailer, uh, which would be good for a landscape unit, a, you know, a nice 16 foot landscape trailer that this sits on that we couldn't leave outside. And, and have our equipment stay safe. So uh, it, it was kind of the right time. There's a few bucks left over that, or a few bucks available that we can use for it. And, and it's something that's been needed, but probably never rose to the height that it is right now. And probably mostly because of the building expansion request that's coming down the road. We're looking at ways to you know, we know that the, you know, the taxpayers got to foot that bill and we're looking at ways to conserve and, and get it a little smaller. And then this is one way to save some space and produce a, a, a piece of equipment that will be very multifunctional and uh, at the same time. Okay, thank you. But shouldn't Bruce Dixon be presenting this before originally or initially? Uh, he, he did to Josh and uh, it, you know, to get it started. And Bruce is on the line tonight. I'm sure if he, if you want him to add to this at all, but uh, since I'm the one that seems to be, <laughs> I have the floor more, more than he does tonight. Uh, I kind of just stepped in to explain it, but he's, he's with us tonight, uh, you know, to explain it. If I, uh, if I wasn't able to, or didn't want to, he's here, but I just kind of opened my mouth and did it. Okay, thank you. I've, I've never been one to, to stay shut up. So I, yeah. when, when it opens up, I just started talking. Um, I have a lot of problems um, with this particular request. Um, first of all, it is the only category where we are transferring from one budget to another. This is a transfer from... Um, professional and technical services, which is uh, under the board of selectmen to a, to the fire commission equipment line. Um, I went through fire commission minutes um, back through November and saw no discussion with the fire commission whatsoever recorded in the minutes doesn't mean it doesn't didn't happen, but it's not recorded in their minutes that they were consulted on this purchase at all. Um, this purchase never came before the CAPA committee. Um, and I'm a little perturbed about that um, because that's the second request from the fire department for significant funds that managed to attempt to bypass the CAPA committee. Um, it wasn't even brought up in the fire department budget request, which is less than two months old at this point. And now it appears that somebody looked and said, gee whiz, we've got some extra money. I want to spend it. And I don't see that this is an emergency need. I don't see that this is an emergency life-saving need. I view this as an, gee whiz, there's some extra money over there at the Board of Selectmen. I'm going to reach in and spend it instead of sending it back to the taxpayers and the Board of Finance 
to reduce the tax rate. And I am opposed to this transfer for those reasons. Well, I, I can assure you, Sandy, that it may not have seen the minutes in the fire commission budget, but it has been discussed at the fire officers meetings and at several other uh, times in the department when, when we talked about uh, things that, that we could use to accomplish the goals of the department. Uh, and, and Mike, it, I, need it, to, I need to remind you that the fire commission is the liaison between the fire officers and the town. I we, realize that. We, the town, appoint them to assist us in helping to evaluate some of those requests. And it appears at this point, unless you can tell me differently, that that has once again failed to happen. Mike, could I step in here? Yeah, you're the chief, go ahead. Bruce Dixon, 72, Bruce Dixon, 72 Tinker Pond Road, also fire chief. Uh, Mr. First Selectman, uh, I beg to differ with the comment you just made. This is an attempt for the fire department to bypass the capital equipment group and the finance board. Far from it. This particular item has been talked about for a long period of time within the fire officers. I try to present a fiscally sound budget to you, which I've done every year and you've approved every time for items that are gonna be used and not fluff. We were approached by the town on this to say we have additional funds. What other equipment could you use at this particular time? When that request came to myself, I sat with the deputy chief. We went out, did some research for something we've been discussing for a long period of time. And as Mike eloquently said, it would take up this freeze up space in the firehouse, thereby leaving. Uh, not having to build a larger facility than what we were originally thinking of. This particular trailer would be outside with the equipment in it stored, ready to go with a multi-purpose, and the other trailer turned back. The town came to us. We were asked if we needed anything, and here's a request. So please do not say that the fire department is jamming this down or trying to bypass the finance board or the board of selectmen. That's all I have to say. I do just want to make a clarifying statement, um, and and I don't want to weigh in on either side. This is a matter for the board to consider. Um, but I will say that in communications with the leadership team, I did reach out, and Bruce is uh, certainly a part of my leadership team um, within town staff and and those of us who are working on uh, leading specific departments. Uh, and I did encourage individuals, now that we are approaching a point, as I've discussed with the board before, uh, to be thinking about the items that they need to buy before the end of the fiscal year and to do it in such a time uh, that it is not going to be so close to the end of the fiscal year uh, that they are not going to receive that item within the current fiscal year. And also to make sure um, that, uh, that uh, it's not going to raise any alarms with the auditor. Um, this is the only item that was brought to my attention that would require uh, any funds from outside of the department that was proposing the purchase. Um, so there were a number of different proposals that came forward where uh, there is a certain amount of equipment that's needed, um, uh, for example, uh, but all of those different requests were able to be considered within the department's uh, budget itself. This one, simply, there isn't enough money within the fire commission uh, to be able to manage the request that they've put forward. Uh, I put this forward to you now in the spirit of, of making sure that uh, the fire commission has an equal opportunity to be heard uh, at this meeting. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you were all aware of the circumstances under which uh, this request came forward. I hope that's I, a fair comment. I'd like to, and I want to add, add, I'd, I'd like to add one more thing. I'd like to add one more thing. Okay, where this comment was made that we turned around and transferred it to the fire department equipment budget. We have nothing to do with the finance department on how they turn around and put their funds into different accounts. 
I've got a list right here how the number of times the finance department has changed account numbers that I've put on. Whatever they wanted to do, it's their department. You give me a pot of money, I run your fire department. So, again, the fire department did not try to circumvent you on here, and we definitely didn't even have an indication where you're going to put funds. In fact, the finance department created a new fund, uh, uh, what's a vehicles, to buy a boat. Never heard of the vehicle account. So I have nothing to do with the finance department. And I certainly didn't intend to say that you did have the fire department. What I do have a problem with, and it wouldn't matter if this were the fire department, the building department, the highway department, or anyone else, we get to the end of the year and it is not my intention or my desire to go out and find items to buy that were not either on the town's wish list, budgeted for a future period, or previously cut from a budget, and now we figured out a way to perform to afford it. This is a brand new item. This is the first time I am hearing about it. I can't be sure that the fire commission who I rely on for advice has talked about it. I'm hearing that this is coming from the fire officers. Fire officers should go to the fire commission and they should come to Josh. Out of, ex out of respect, Bruce, Josh reached out to you as leadership. You should have taken it to your fire commission before you brought it to me. My vote on this item is no. Bob? Thank you. Um, two things. One, um, um, Mike, you made a point when you brought this up and I, I want to uh, elaborate on, or I think something that needs el elaboration, which we may not be able to do tonight. And that is the intent is uh, really to overall in the big picture is reduce the uh, possibility of, of uh, the expansion on the firehouse. Um, I'm thinking quite frankly of tabling this particular motion until you can bring that information forward to us. And I think it would help the board um, you know, move this, move this project. Uh, I'm not that I'm opposed to it. I just, I think that bit of information might, uh, might, might help the board members just understand how it fits in the picture. I conceptually, I sort of understand it, but perhaps if you can put together, um, a little more, uh, detailed thought of what, what it will do. I mean, if, if you're saying, that uh, by by moving this forward the way it is, it you know, it's going to save a, sig a significant amount of money money for the town. Then that's something we should discuss in in that regards. But I think we need that information. If you could get it to uh, to, to the administrative officer and and he can distribute it out, and we can have a discussion on that. Right now, it's I, I it's it's hard to do that. Uh, without that bit, that's it. That's that's a pretty important a bit of information on, on 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 moving this forward. So, if uh, and while you're doing that, if you could clarify the request, um, I've heard tonight one bay, two bays. If you could clarify and describe for us what that is, because. Um, when Josh shared this with me, he shared that it would cut down two bays to one bay on the firehouse. I didn't realize we were ever talking about two bays on the firehouse. So if you could also cl clarify that for us, I'd appreciate it. Andy, just, yes. just, just as a kind of a point of reference, uh, the proposal that was going to be coming to the town, uh, through the money that's allocated to do a study or uh, to do a proposed uh, expansion and uh, increase the size of the firehouse was always looking at two bays as a minimum. Uh, what we thought we were able to do with a few things like the shed last year, being able to store some equipment out there. Uh, and right now we have 
at least two vehicles going out one door. We have three vehicles in line in one bay with the uh, UTV trailer in between. So when you go between these vehicles, you have to go sideways. Uh, and and it, it's, we have several spaces in there between the tanker and the rescue truck. There's about a foot we have to go through sideways. Uh, this is about a foot we have to go through sideways. The vehicles that are in there now are not the old style manual transmissions. They're touch key uh, automatics. If somebody was standing between these two vehicles and hit that by accident, we, we could have a serious problem there. And so two bays is what the request will be. Uh, we were trying to cut it down to possibly one. And we're trying to save uh, what's 20 times uh, eight, uh, 160 square feet. And that, that's what we would be saving uh, with just this one thing. We are looking at other ways where we could conceivably uh, do a bay and a quarter. Right now we have, uh, we have lockers for the individuals that are so close to the truck that if a truck moves, they could easily be run over. Uh, so we're, we're dealing with extremely tight spaces now. We're getting more members than we've had before, which requires more lockers for their gear. And the, the building is bursting at the seams. It was in 1987 or 86 when it was built, there was already a proposal for an expansion before the building was finished. Uh, so it, we're, we're looking at a couple of bays. That's probably where we're going to end up. This would potentially take out the equivalent of the size of one of our pieces of apparatus, which might allow us to do just one bay. That was why we thought of it. We've been talking about it for a long period of time. Uh, as Josh said, he asked if there were things that needed to be purchased. This was one of the ones that came right to mind as a way to save space and accomplish several functions. Uh, like I said, there, you know, if, if I need to do a study of what the, uh, what the effects are going to be of this vehicle on an expansion or to give you the finished statement that you'll probably get in around September on the need for the expansion, uh, we will be well out of this budget year. Uh, so that, if, if that's something that needs to happen, we might as well just forget the whole idea right now because it'll never happen. I don't have the time to do it. I don't see anybody else that has the time to put into it. Uh, it, it it's just one of those things that similar to if, you know, if the town had an extra $150,000 to spend, we might want to ask you for replacement of our 68 year old forestry truck. But, you know, that's, that's a whole different subject. This came up, this is a multifunction vehicle or a piece of equipment that will protect our people, protect townspeople, because they'll be able to use it in situations where they're put out of their home or need shelter for a period of time, a uh, short period of time, and protect our equipment and save us from having three pieces of equipment where you're walking between them sideways. It's a safety issue. It was the right time and the right place for this. It's something we've looked at for years. We've just never put it in the budget because it's never risen to to that level of going in as a capital item because we've had so many other things that we have to have. And each year we seem That's to be coming right. in with, with a larger cap, you know, with a list of capital items. And it, it just, you know, when, when Josh mentioned it, it was something that, that we had talked about and it seemed to fit the bill and that's the reason it's here. And, and if we need to do a study of why it's needed, that'll never happen because there's just no. no time for a volunteer organization to sit down between now and the end of the year and, and create that kind of study. At least not for me. I've, you know, I've been doing grant proposals for the department the past couple of years and, and I'm, you know, along with the other things, this is not something I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna tackle. All right. Hey, Mike. Uh, Maura? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, okay, thank you. But maybe you misunderstood what I was suggesting. I, obviously, we weren't looking for you to do a set of preliminary drawings of what, what might happen. But I think um, just for everyone, other than us here, uh, to understand what's going on, two things I would suggest to bring before our next meeting. Mike makes some pretty 
valid points about what it currently exists. If you could, um, you know, uh, provide uh, the administrator with with a set of photographs on that to illustrate what 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 the need is. One, two, I think it'd be important that your um, uh, fire commission. This is going forward. Come forward and and if and support this thing it, because that's that's part of what it should be. And I think I I don't think one month is going to make a difference on this expenditure. I mean, I'm not I'm, well, not, I'm not saying this because I'm not opposed to it. I'm saying this because I think it's important for everyone involved, whichever way they vote, they understand what the ramifications are of of this vehicle and what the current situation is. You know, I, you I, where I'm going? Just just so you know what the the what potentially is going to be the outcome of waiting a month. I stopped to see the individual at Connecticut Trailers today who has the GSA for, for things like that. And yeah. he informed me that two weeks from now, uh, he hopes he'll hold, he can hold it for two weeks, but there's a $1,500 increase in this trailer. So it, that's it's- a freight, That's a freight charge, freight charge, not the trailer. Fre freight charge and construction charge. There's uh, freight goes from 1,400 to 2,100 next week. Uh, if you don't lock in, there's just several things that that make it the right time to have it here. If if we're not going to go forward with it, then you know, uh, I don't. I don't. Then I then I would just as soon be perfectly honest. You just as soon go back to the two bays expansion and and just let this come up for some other day in time. Well, it's, I, it's, I, I, that's I, not. I'm not in favor of that. Quite well, frankly, I think I, I in all candor, I think this will. This, you know, it based on the description in the long term, it does save money. But when I'm, and quite frankly, um, I think it's it's important that we we have uh, the information presented to the public that that supports what you're saying. I know it's there because I'm in and out of that firehouse. Right. So, you've you've seen walking not, between the vehicles and the danger that's in that's, that's sitting there right now. And, that's why I know what you're saying. But yeah. a person who is doesn't do that really has a difficult time understanding this. I I mean I I think this this thing will work well. Thanks. But and I, in all in all candor, if it if it yeah if you're going to have to pay a higher freight, well maybe you might. Let's take a look at uh, about that. But quite frankly, I think it's important that we you, we have a go forward this then have a good solid case for it to go forward. I think you can do that if you present it to us uh, on, uh, you know, in one of a, uh, and if it extends another three weeks. If it extends um, another three weeks, it's another fifteen hundred dollars. I understand that. And uh, you know, yeah, but, uh, you know but, my, I, it's but it is important that that this be supported. Well, you know, I've I've given you as much support as as I, I know how to give you. Uh, as you know, I, I wear two hats, and and I'm sorry I wear two hats, and maybe this time next year I won't be wearing two hats. But uh, it's a piece of equipment that's important. It's a piece of equipment that. Right now, there's there's funding to do it. It will serve a safety function. It will serve multiple functions. And, uh, you know, uh, what you're going to get two weeks from now is what I'm giving you right now. And with, and, with, and with, with the illustrations that shows what it I'm, is. I'm not going to do illustrations. People, I'm, I can take not, pictures. I, I'm done, Bob. I, I'm not going to do it. I'm, right, like right. I said, I spend enough time doing things for the town. I'm done. Okay, you, I, I it's fine. I'm nope. sorry, Mike. I didn't mean to. It, it's. I'm sorry too, Bob. I'm. This is not something I'm taking home to my house. This is not something for me. This is not a piece of equipment that's going to make me anything. This is a piece of equipment to take care of the people of the community and those people that serve the community for free. It's not something that makes me 
any more money. It doesn't make me any happier. It doesn't make me any sadder. It doesn't do anything for Mike Aramita or Bruce Dixon personally. This okay. is a piece of equipment I, that Mike, belongs, I think, I think belongs to the point. town, belongs to the people, and takes care of the people. If you don't want it, just say you don't want it. No. Don't no. say that we want to investigate it. We want to study it. We want to have pictures. Don't tell me all of that. Just either say yes or no. You want it or you yeah. don't want it. It's that simple. It's done. I'm, I'm done so, talking. Thank you. So this is Kim. Can I, I just want to say one thing, right? So, and I'm totally support the fire department. Like anytime I've ever called anyone, they're there in a second, right? But to Bob's point, to, like, I don't know what this is at all. Like I was looking up what is a, you know, GVWR trailer and it just means gross weight. Mm -hmm. To me, like I think of a trailer as it's a flat bed trailer to carry something. So I don't understand what it is. And it does seem like a relatively large expenditure. So I would like more information before I have to vote on it. Cause I don't want to say no when it's something we should do, right? And I, I want, I would like to have this thing go forward, but I, and, and I know what it's going to take. Mike, I, I know what it's going to take to have it go forward. And that's why yeah, I'm saying, I, I just forget it. It's not, I'm not trying to despair. Bob, the, like I said, it, it, for Kim to know, Kim, it's a big box trailer that's insulated, has heat and air, has room to store our Kubota with our pump and our uh, emergency rescue equipment in it so that it's outside the building because there's, we're walking between two vehicles and a trailer and all kinds of things that, that are taking up space. It was an idea to, to save some space in the, the building that we have now to make it safer, potentially for an expansion, make it a little smaller. It's just a box trailer with a few extra additions okay. to it. And that's all it was. So and the issue that I didn't understand the piece about walking between the trailers. So what uh, the trucks? So what you're saying is there's all kinds of equipment sitting in there with nowhere to put it that's out of the elements, and that causes a safety hazard for the people that are in the building currently, right? That yes. that's what the okay. I was envision when you were saying it was a safety issue between the trucks. I'm thinking was it only narrow? Like what's the? <laughs> I didn't there understand. Is, there how is that was no space. Help. There is no space okay. left in that so building. So it's. it's it's but on the other hand, Kim, we've had equipment. that we've had that condition at the firehouse for several years. This is not something that just popped up. And I find the fact that somebody said, let's spend money, and they found a way to spend money that had never been brought forward before under normal channels. Um, I'm having it's kind of, it's kind of, difficulty reconciling it's kind of, that. It's kind of like two years ago, I got, excuse me for interrupting Bruce Dixon. Two years ago, I got a phone call from uh, town uh, administrative assistant, Joyce Stilley. And she says, Bruce, I've got some money at the end of the year. What do you need? And we were looking at Hearst or the uh, Jaws of Life, amicus tools. And at that point, the lady bought $18,000 worth of amicus tools that were not on a capital expense. This is the same thing that came up here. I'll be more than happy to get in some pictures for you and give you a picture of the trailer itself, okay, and get it off to you and you make a decision. This was offered to us. It sounds like it's now it's causing a rift between the selectmen and the fire department. It's happened lately. I don't like it, okay? I will get you the information you're looking for. And to make a decision. That's all. If we don't have it, life's going to go on. If we have it, it's a benefit to the town. Thank you, Mike. And uh, Mike, <laughs> Bruce, uh, Bruce. Uh, but and, and I think by providing the information, I think you you open up a channel for this thing to get moving forward. That's all I was asking. I also, uh, you know, I'm not and, and not no. looking to put any more work on anybody else, but. Nah, no, Bob, I also, I also, it. you know, even, even with COVID, you know, it's closed firehouse to the public, but the selectmen are more than welcome to come down and do a preview of what we're talking about, even when I provide you pictures, because sometimes pictures tell a thousand words, but seeing it is actual fact. So, yep. so if any of the selectmen wanted to, they could contact you to go through or Mike? Would that be a, you know, last uh, time this, I think. This is a personality I think the last problem, time. Bill. 
Yeah, is, like I think, is, uh, excuse me, to the selectmen, I believe the last time that Sandy really came down, where she came down to, excuse me, Mrs. Selectman uh, came down, we invited her down to, to uh, for the uh, delivery of the new boat. But before that, uh, Sandy and I used to sit down once a year and talk about the fire department. She'd come down to the fire department, she'd walk around and say, hey, what do you need? How's things going? Good. We don't have those talks anymore. But when she did, at that point in time, she saw me go upstairs to the warehouse, which was there since 1984. And we climbed a stairway, which was not secured to a wall. And as I jumped over three and a half feet, she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting something out of our warehouse that we have the only access to. And at that point, the lady, along with uh, administrative assistant, Joyce Stilley, bought a $34,000 stairway to go up there. And we so, bought which that we thank you very through much. normal, we did buy that through normal channels, Bruce. And well, I I'm am not, a very I, strong supporter of the fire department, but I also believe that there's a method to get things done in Bolton. And I'm sorry, Sandy, I, I agree disagree with, with your method here. This is no, the no, to bring excuse it to me, stop it. It's not our method, excuse me. It's not our method. Not to throw anybody under the bus. We got a phone call. We got an email. Do you need anything at the end of the year? There's money available. Yeah. We have been talking about this in the officers. If it's available, great. Now it turned into a 32 and a half minute conversation. Like Mike says, forget it. Let's get all happy again. I'll be happy to get your pictures and you can look at it next year. We'll put it in the budget. Well, quite frankly, I think this this particular item should not be let go. Uh, um, I, Bob, I, it's done. I'm not going to play this game anymore. When somebody asks me what we need and we tell you what we need because yep. they say we have enough money to buy something and we bring it before the Board of Selectmen or the Chief brings it before the Board of Selectmen, which I'm part of, that's how it gets here and to be told the things I've been told tonight about the, no, forget it. Keep the money, keep the trailer. We'll deal with the problem with the building expansion. And Sandy, it is two bays that we will be requesting because there is a need for that much space. So let's just move on, forget this piece of equipment. And in two years, we will have enough space with a two bay expansion to keep that thing in there as it should be. We won't have the rehab unit like we were hoping to have a multifunction unit, but this is political. This is, this is a game that unfortunately has been going on between the first selectman and the fire department and the finance director and the fire department for the past six months. And this is just playing, I'll get you back kind of thing. And I'm tired of it. I don't want to play the game. I, I do dozens of hours a week for this community. Be on the board of selectmen, on the board of fire department, and everything else I do here. Gosh. I'm done. I didn't, I, like I told you before, this is not for me. This is for the people of it our community. That. Josh. It, it's Mike. not anything that I'm getting any satisfaction on. If we you guys don't that. want can to I, do can it. I make a, can I make a suggestion? Can I make don't. a suggestion? I, Please, I do Please. think this is important. And I think that everyone's getting emotionally heated. And I would like it to go forward, but I would like more information. So can we go with what Bob's suggestion was? Let's, let's table it. And then we can get some information. We can come back next time. We'll all have, you know, kind of come down. It'll be $1,500 more. I, 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 okay. I get that. I understand I that. There's a lot of to, to get the information, which I'm, I'm giving for... you tonight, you are not going to get anything more than I have just given you tonight. You have gotten the whole picture, the whole story, what the thing is, what the problem is, and what the solution is. I can write it down and I can hand it to you tomorrow, but it's going to be the exact same thing I told you tonight. No I difference. I'd like to move on here. Fine, Josh. Sandy. I'm done. I would just like to chime in and, and first and foremost apologize for any role that I had in this misunderstanding. I do believe that this is something that's worth discussing, and I think that we're all in agreement that this is an item, if it really can save us money down the road, that should be discussed. I think that we can talk about the method and make sure that the fire commission is roped into any further conversations. And I think that we can try and get more information about the actual factual 
uh, item that is going to be purchased, including whether it's a picture, whether it's a demonstration, what you name it. There are a lot of different ways that we can pursue this. I think that the board has a full understanding of the fact that we are talking about it being more expensive a month from now as compared to approving the transfer at this meeting. Uh, but I think unless there are blocking concerns that that is the consensus, that it would be better at this point to see that be a little more expensive and do our due diligence and, and act in the interest of good government um, to do that full review rather than try and push it through without a more thorough consensus. And, and an overview more than I gave you tonight, you will not get. So just drop the thing from the budget. And as the chief said, we will put it in capital for next year. And as I told Sandy, we will be asking for two bays. And just to clarify it, because you didn't know that before, it will be a request for two bays. And uh, just oh. drop this issue, drop the whole thing. Don't ever come to us and say, we have some money, do you need anything? Don't ever do that again, because it I just creates a problem like this. Sandy, your representative did. Josh did. Thank you. So it, just drop it. Forget it. It's not worth All fighting right. like this. So it, it's a political thing that has been going on for about six months between the fire department and finance and the first selectman. And I don't want any part of it. So we gave you every piece of information you could ask for. Take it or leave it. I don't care. It's not for me. I don't own I, it. It doesn't go in my yard. I understand that, Mike. Yep. Well. All right. Um, just do what you want with it. I don't. What care is anymore. the board's pleasure with these transfers? Do you want a single motion? Do you want a group motion? I'll accept a motion from someone. All right. Well, I want a motion to accept them all as presented. No, I can't second that. Don't. Is there a second to the motion to present? accept them all as presented. Hearing none, that motion fails. Is there another motion? Bob DiPietro. I move to accept all transfers except that one that's involving the uh, trailer for the fire department. And let that be Tables like Barbara suggested. Not because of the bears. We all agree that it's bears are there. It's just the process that's causing a problem here, from my perspective. So I would boo that we make approve all of the transfers except that one that seems to be causing the problem. All right, is there a second to that motion? I second that. You said All table. Right. You said Correct. table, this other one. Correct. Yvonne, as right. okay, I yes. heard Bob DiPietro's motion, and Bob, please correct me if I'm if I miss misheard. You moved to accept all the transfers with the exception of the transfer from um transfer to fire department equipment from administration and perfect professional and technical services and further that you move to table that particular transfer to the May meeting of the board of selectmen yes yes That's thank correct. you and that was kim miller who seconded it is there any further discussion on that motion yes, no all right, all those in favor of the motion as presented, which is to accept the transfers as presented and to table the purchase of the trailer to our next meeting, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Mike Aramito, we don't see or hear you. Are you voting? In the negative. I'm voting in the negative, so I'm not raising my hand at this time. Got you. Thank you. All right. So I have four yes votes and one, one, negative. No, one negative vote. All right. Thank you. Um, we will. If you'll all excuse me. This is my wife's birthday. I was on this meeting because of a couple of things on the agenda that I cared about. And I'm signing off. Good night. Good night, Mike. Thank you for joining us. Um, 
let's see. Uh, do we have any other ongoing business, Josh? Sorry, I couldn't get to that unmute button. For ongoing business, I don't believe so, no. Okay. Well, All right. Charter it is. Uh, that's coming up. Um, next item on the agenda, because we skipped around tonight, is item 8C, approval of a resolution appointing the Board of Education as the Public Building Commission with regard to full roof replacement and other repairs at the Bolton Center School. Um, this is a required resolution by the Department of Administration, I'm sorry, Administrative Services at the State of Connecticut to allow the um, Board of Education to apply for grants for the roof replacement. And uh, if we do this now, we also may call it, and it's a may, qualify for grants for uh, the engineering work as well. So moved. So it's moved by Bob DiPietro, seconded by Bob Mora. Is there any discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That's four. And Mr. Aramita has left the meeting, so that was unanimous. Um, setting a referendum date for the 2022 budget is next on our agenda. Um, our dear governor today, about four o'clock, issued a new executive order um, which permits absentee ballots, no excuse absentee ballots for uh, anyone voting in a local election referendum um, until May 20th. Um, it also allows where in a municipality where the legislative body is the town is a town meeting, uh, which is us, the board of selectmen may alter its budget adopted adoption dates, provided that such vote is taken before May 20th, 21 and the final budget is approved before June 30th, 2021, or at a minimum, the first town meeting or referendum that may be required to approve such budget is conducted before June 30th, 2021. Um, as I was commenting before the meeting was called to order, um, some of the larger communities are expecting significant dollars from the federal government, which we are supposed to hear within 14 days, how they will be allocated and how they will be spent. Um, the fear is right now that, or I shouldn't say fear, concern right now is that the um, Federal government may say that you cannot use these federal monies coming as part of the uh, American Rehabilitation Program Act or whatever it was that Pam reminded me was earlier today, um, that you can't use those th monies to, to um, spend on items that you otherwise had budgeted. So we're hope this um, proposal will allow those communities to do that. Um, Bolton's allocation under this program is 48, about $48,000. I think we all learned that we certainly have a place to spend at least $48,000 should that opportunity fall into our laps, um, unbudgeted, um, unplanned for, um, but nevertheless useful. So um, my suggestion is that we continue to target May 18th as our referendum. It falls well within these dates. Um, and our, at our May meeting, if we are involved in a pandemic surge or find out that we are in the next two weeks that we are qualified for significantly more money, um, we still have the opportunity because that would be May before, well before May 20th to change that date. 
and to extend our budget deadlines. So my recommendation is that we set the date for May 18th and we continue this item on our agenda for our May meeting for uh, reflection and reconsideration if necessary. So um, I'm sorry, it, did you say 2022, the 2022? It's the budget for fiscal year 2022. Oh, fiscal but, year, okay, okay, got it, got it. I was okay. like, all right, I'm good, thank you, sorry. I may, I may well have said 2022, Kim, as well, but it is, no, it you, is for uh, yeah. fiscal year 2022. With, but the deadline Got is it. June 30th, 2021. Okay. okay. Is there a motion to set the date as May 18th? So moved. So moved by Bob Mora, seconded Bob DiPietro. Any further discussion? We are going to... Um, likely at our May meeting also discuss where we are going to do this. Uh, Chief Dixon, are you still here? Uh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, is there a potential possibility that you could move your equipment from 8 a.m., I'm sorry, from 6 a.m. till 8 p.m. so that we could open the doors of the firehouse on both ends and use that as an open air polling place. It's your firehouse. <laughs> I'll turn it's... around and put one. You have to be moved off site and uh, secured. Um, and the firehouse would have to be secured with the rest of the monetary value of stuff in there from the public. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We are going to continue to look for another place and hope that the pandemic has lessened and perhaps we could even get back to um, the um, town hall, but at the, or Herrick Park. But at this point, um, I can't guarantee either that. So thank you, and we will stay yeah, in touch. Can. If I can speak for another department in town for that same subject, yep. weather is going to be very, weather is a very key factor in the polling machines working properly with humidity. Ah, excellent point that had and not. I have no, not. I have no knowledge on that. You may want to check with the registrar with the that knows, the registrar that knows the Republican registrar, not the Democrat registrar. Okay, the, the Democratic Registrar has just shown his face in our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jim. If he's there, if he's there, that's great. If he's got technical knowledge on it, different than what my wife has, that'd be fantastic. Good. Yeah, Jim, we were just discussing um, with Bruce a potential location at the firehouse, and he brought up the fact that there may be an issue with, um, if it's, a less than perfect day, which May 18th is probable of happening, um, yeah. that there would be an issue in an open air environment with the voting machines. Well, with with the uh, open air, that shouldn't be a problem. The problem is when we get raindrops or moisture off of clothing, ah. that presents a problem. And humidity. No. Yes. Um, okay. Cut it out. Yeah, um, that's that's the basics, mm. you know. All right. Okay. So at this point, um, we will not set the location for the referendum, but we have set the date as May eighteenth. Yes. Um, okay. I all right, but we have not voted on that. All, uh, all those in favor of setting May 18th as the date for the first referendum, raise your hand, please. That There are four hands up. Thank you, that's unanimous. There are only four selectmen in attendance at this point. All right, um, Jim, if you and Bernice have any ideas about um, location, uh, Herrick Park Town Hall of the referendum, if you'd share them with Jim Rupert. 
we'd okay. be happy to work with you to um, see what we can make happen. Um, no a third part, fourth party, I guess, because it's you, me, Jeff, fifth party, um, suggested to me that uh, Georgina's restaurant may also be, it's handicapped accessible, it has multiple exits, it's a large open room um, that perhaps we could do something or um, even over at Villa Luisa. We have two large banquet facilities that may okay. um, fit that bill since the schools are not available. Yeah, correct. Um, so think about well, that with your partner and let us know, let Jim know. Okay, we will do. Um, and I also don't know whether in fact it's legal for us to take it off public property to private property either. So that's a hurdle we'd have to have to cross. I've I've been told that uh, because it's a public or full referendum, we can hold it anywhere. Excellent. All right, so, so think about some of those alternatives that might be our ace in the hole. Okay, me and Bernice will take a look at them. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Appointment of the town treasurer. Josh, will you um, make sure that is on our agenda for Thursday, or Jim, whoever's doing Thursday night's agenda, make sure that's on the Thursday night agenda. Absolutely. Um, it is now 8.43. Um, I still have to drive home, so. It's 8.53. I'm sorry, 8.53. Yeah, it's worse than it's, what you thought. I know. Uh, thanks, Bob. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm going to skip the Charter Commission recommendation, and we will do that and appointment of the treasurer on Thursday. Um, COVID-19 report, uh, we are now up to 100 and, I'm sorry, 256 cases. Um, we have had um, five cases in the last two days, um, primarily um, among high school students due to some spreader events that were held a week ago. So um, that's where we are. Um, for members of the public who might be listening, um, our senior center does maintain a last minute vaccine availability list. So if you haven't yet registered for a, um, a vaccine appointment and you'd like to get on that list, call our Senior Citizen Center and they will put you on the list. The only requirement is that you must be able to get to, man you must have a cell phone with an email and you must be able to get to Mansfield within 30 minutes of the call. So if you live in Bolton and can leave almost immediately, it's a good source for that. Um, and I think that's it. Um, Josh, Jim, who goes first? If it's all right, I'd like to go first. Um, sure. Uh, First and foremost, I mean, really, Jim uh, is what I have to report about. Uh, at this point in time, while we have a lot more work to do in the next three days, and while I'll certainly be a resource to not just Jim, but anybody within the town staff and government uh, that needs assistance going forward, I'll, I'll be available. Uh, Jim and I have had the opportunity to several times uh, since this transitionary period began. Um, we have set, uh, I've certainly started to develop a list of the final items that we need to cover uh, in my last three days in office to make sure that he is in as good a shape as possible to uh, proverbially take the reins um, as we go forward. If there are items that members of the Board of Selectmen feel are very important that they would like to touch base with Jim about, we can set up Zoom meetings, whether it be this week or next week uh, or, or even there. Um, I believe that Jim is uniquely positioned to uh, uh, take over uh, within this office on an interim basis to have an understanding of the different projects that we are already in the process of 
uh, and to navigate all of this very successfully. Uh, but there is still a wealth of knowledge uh, out there that is going to be of great use to him, that has been of great use to me. Uh, and I want to make sure that he um, has as much of that information and as much of that support, um, certainly as I've been given over these past two years. So um, uh, thank you all for your support of our transition processes. Uh, and please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, if you would like to be uh, more hands-on involved. Um, certainly, Bob, I know that uh, between you, me, and Jim, we should probably touch base, for example, on sewer matters uh, right. to make sure that um, we're all on the same page as I transition away. Um, I, I will save uh, a couple more comments. I know I actually, this is my last regular meeting, but um, for my last special meeting uh, on Thursday. So I'm, I'm savoring each of the meetings. Uh, and I'm looking forward to um, helping out on Thursday as well. Uh, Jim, do you have any updates that you want to give at this time? So I would first like to say just, you know, thank you to the Board of Selectmen for your, the faith that you placed in me in allowing me to, you know, carry the ball forward that, you know, Josh has been working on for his last uh, 18 months or so in Bolton. And, uh, you know, I know what I know, but I'm also learning what I don't know. and. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that I have uh, a really good staff in place. And that's that's really going to help make, you know, the areas where I'm weak, that's going to bridge the gap, I think. And, um, you know, Josh and I have worked together quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. And we've accomplished and covered a lot of ground. You know, we have, as he said, quite a bit more work to do in the next couple of days. But uh, I, I think we're... I think we're going to forge forward and, and uh, create a great partnership and work well together. Thank you, Jim, for those comments. Um, I welcome. think on behalf of the entire board, um, we wish Josh well, but I'm dying to know if the whole house got painted. <laughs> this coming weekend. So ah. you're going to have to have me back to find out. <laughs> right. So um, with that, if there are no other items to um, come before the board this evening, um, I'm going to call this meeting adjourned and we will see you Thursday at seven o'clock.